Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and today we're going to be talking about flounder. Yes, my favorite fish to catch. Flounders are my number one, and it is that time of the season. You know, we have been, I've been fishing a lot, I have been catching a lot, tons and tons of flounder, all catch and release. Getting ready to open the season here in Texas where you can be able to start harvesting them on the 15th, you can start keeping them. So I wanted to drop this video right before that, just to give anybody that is looking for any ideas, um, where to catch them, how to catch them, uh, any kind of tips and what they've been biting on this season so far. So thanks for coming back. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Push that bell notification. It will let you know the next time I upload the video. Leave a comment, like, share, all that good stuff. You know, it really helps the channel out and really goes far. All right. But let's get right into it. I got a lot of information to cover, so I'm not going to go into too much detail talking about all these different topics. I have done videos based on all the stuff that I'm really going to talk about beside the tips and what I've learned this year. But all the videos will be, all the links for the videos in more detail are in the description section of this video. So if I'm telling you about a rig, how to tie it. Um, if you want to know how to tie it, that video link will be in the description. If I'm talking to you about, you know, fishing a certain area, again, that video will be in the description section as well. We're going to kind of run through all this and see if we can go as fast as possible so I can get all the information to you, all the knowledge that I have into you, open my brain, throw it right in this video, and hopefully we can keep it within a reasonable time frame. All right, so number one place, everybody wants to know, where do you catch them? Where are you catching the fish? Where are you hooking up? Well... I'm not going to give any pin drops, but I will tell you this. Flounder will funnel out of major waterways that will funnel through major channels going into the Gulf. So if you're wondering where can I fish them, where can I catch them, where are you catching them? I'm not fishing any kind of secret locations, okay? I'm fishing right here in Galveston. I'm not going any, I'm not fishing any kind of private property. You know, I mean, this is all open water, so... Wherever I'm catching them, you can be fishing there too. You just have to little be, spend a little time and effort on the water and use Google Maps. I use Google Maps quite a lot and I'm looking for locations where to fish. And a lot of times these are just really, really popular spots, you know. Um, whether it's the Ferry Landing or Sea Wolf Park or all up and down that channel or around the ship channel, South Jetty, North Jetty, you know, these are all really popular locations. So wherever See, so what happens, I'll explain it to you real fast. What happens is the flounders will drain out of the bays, drain out of the smaller channels, go into the bigger channels, go into the ship channel, and then go out to the Gulf. And they will do the same thing whether you're, whether you're in San Luis Pass or even further down the coast. Wherever it funnels, wherever it filters out to the Gulf, it will funnel the flounder, and that's why we catch them in such large numbers because they're just really, everybody has to go through these one or two exits into the Gulf, and if you set up shop, you're gonna catch quite a lot as they run through. So where to catch them, you wanna catch them in those high populated areas where they're gonna funnel through, and also around structure, whether it's rocks, jetty rocks, drop-offs, bulkheads, I mean, even where, these, where they have these neighborhoods around and on the water, and it's through one of these major channels, you're gonna catch a lot of flounder, you really are. And I'll talk a little bit more that, about that in the tips, but I do have a video, like I said before, in more detail, how to catch them and other locations that I do name in this video. So you can check that out. It's in the link in the description section. But where to catch them, they're just simply funneling through and all around structure. You want to catch them on structure. They're on the bottom. Fish the bottom. Work your lure slow. Cast a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, so how are we catching them? What are we using? What are we throwing? Well, our number one, I keep saying our, but you know, mine and my group of friends you know the number one lure that we're using is gulp i mean that's it i have some friends out there that are tearing them up they're they're having fun on some voodoo shrimp they're putting some pro care on it they're putting some scents on it but it has been gulp gulp has been my go-to for a flounder for a lot a lot of years yes other lures work great but honestly if you're looking for a hookup if you're looking for a huge percentage of chance to catch them the gulp is it. I know. Gulp tear up. Nobody really likes to use gulp because they tear up so easy. You can catch one fish or two fish and your, your gulp is gone. But the hookup ratio for gulp is just, there's no comparison. There really isn't. All right. 
Number one lure has been a goat. That's how we've been catching them. The number one rig for me has been the get her done rig. Now, if you're not familiar with this rig, again, I have a video in the description section that will show you how to tie this rig. Chatterweight, similar to a drop shot, drop shot from what I'm told. I, I never fish with a drop shot. But, you know, chatterweight on top, or you can use a swivel. You have the line coming out with your J hook style, a hook, and then a simple weight on bottom. And what you do is just pretty much just jig it on bottom. Now, I will say this, in that video, I talk about using a six cent hook, but, you know, we, we, listen, Cody Dunn showed me this rig, and just like anybody else's experience and knowledge, you take it, you use it, you craft it and change it into your own, and then you change up things. One of the things that I did change up was the hook. I found these from... H2 Express at Academy. They have this little hook saver, little bait saver, I mean, on there. So whenever you slide your lure on, it catches on a little better. And they're and they're really they're they're a lot cheaper. With the six cents hooks, you're probably paying close to around maybe like six bucks. These are like three, maybe four. And uh, they come, I believe, five. They come the size 5 come with 7, and the size 3 come with 8. And these are the both sizes I use, 3 and 5. And then on the bottom, it's just a little simple sinker weight. I like throwing the half ounce. Half ounce feels better. I think in the video, we talked about throwing a full ounce, but half ounce works works great for me. Uh, if you're in different water depth and you have to go all the way to the bottom and there's a strong current, then obviously you want to put a heavier weight on. If not, you're... Your line's going to be way out here, and the bottom is over here, and it's never going to touch the bottom where the fish are. So it really depends on, on the depth and how strong the current is, but half ounce is, is all, all you really need. And then an, another style is, you know, with throwing the tandem rigs. Tandem rigs work great. I like throwing the tandem rigs as well. Problem is you have two hooks on, so you have twice the chance to get hung up. So I won't throw the tandem a whole, whole lot. I pr really primarily fish out of my kayak with the tandem, and that's for the simple fact that I can just go right over that oyster reef or wherever I'm hung up in my kayak and just kind of get it out. If I have to get out my kayak, I can get out my kayak, you know, and get it out. But Another way that we've been catching them, okay, number one has to get her done, number two is a tandem, and number three is simple. It's just a, a simple single jig head. You know, I like to throw the, the heavier stuff to keep it on bottom. Uh, these are three eighths. I will throw half an ounce, and um, haven't quite braved myself to throw a full ounce yet, but I know Cody, he'll throw a full ounce. And this, again, this is a change of pace kind of fishing, right? So... If I am fishing, many times it's happened where I'm fishing to get a done rig, and I'm just fishing way too fast for the bait, for the fish to to bite. And uh, that's just me. I, I fish fast. I put a single jig head on, and me, personally, it makes me slow it down. I have to slow it down. I have to, you know, try to keep it on the bottom, trying to a little slower pace. I'll drag it a lot. And that change will make the bite turn on a lot of times for you. So... If the get her done rig's not working or tandem's not working, well, these are also great rigs they have in your arsenal that way you can change it up and you can throw them. Throw them as well if you can help you uh, hook up, right? All right, so another thing that we talked about was gulp, right? So gulp, this has been my go-to lure right here, this color, this style. Shrimp Mantis, New Penny, Chartreuse, Chartreuse Tail, again, talk. and it has been my number one lure my number one style for shrimp but this year <laughs> it hadn't worked that well you know i also like you know the root beer but they're, they're still great to have in your tackle bag because the water clarity where you're fishing what the fish want you know it could change from day to day but you know this these these two colors that i normally tear them up with really hasn't been been as effective as another color that was not really surprising because, you know, I, I still fish with that color, but it's been, it's been white. You know, you can see I'm really low on my white lures and I need to get some more of them. But yeah, it's been white, particularly the four inch white shrimp has been tearing them up. Even the small swim mullet with the chartreuse tail. Now that small little three inch one, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is with that little guy. It has... 
I think I caught like eight flounder on one gulp, and and that's like mind blowing to me because they 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 do they they tear up. But you know that's the price you pay because they're they're such a great lure and such a great scent that they will they will tear up easy on you. But that that little swim mullet white with a chartreuse tail has been has been staying on, has been sticking. I, I don't know, I don't know what what the deal is with it, but. Um, yeah, white has been working. White has been the number one from everybody I talk to, all my friends, no matter where you're, they're wade fishing or by boat, whether they're fishing on the side of the channel that we fish on or they're fishing across to the bottom of our side, white has been the number one when hooking up. Now, my buddy Eric, who has caught, he's caught plenty of 20 plus flounder. His number one that has caught the biggest one is the natural shrimp color. Uh... Four inch, I wrote it down. Four inch natural shrimp has been the number one for him. Again, he agrees with me. White is the best. White has been the most productive and has been that four inch shrimp. Hey, but another tip. Here's a tip right here, right? So this has been kind of a game changer. Nobody likes really to carry these little packs around, right? I mean, we all do though, but you know, these little packs, you know, zipping them back up after, you know, they might leak a little bit. We all know these containers, you know, the lids is not really that dependable. They will leak as well. But this right here, this is, this is Husky uh, waterproof container. Hardware tackle box. Here's another one. No leak, no leaks, no drips. Not leaking, not dripping. And I have like multiple colors all in here. Get them at Home Depot. Uh, I keep my white separate. That way, don't have that color change over and the white stay white. But um, I really don't think it matters. Uh, I just did it anyway. Now, one of the other things that I noticed when we are fishing in the in a channel or off a bulkhead or for wade fishing is that these flounders will come in waves. So don't think because you stop and you fish for 15, 20 minutes and the bite stop now that that's it. You cut all the fish in that area. You may very, very may have well caught all the fish in that area, but if it's a true run and they are moving and they are migrating, which they are this time of year, they are going to roll through again. A whole new batch of flounder, a whole other school of flounders are going to roll in. So when you're there and you're sitting there and you're picking off two, three, four at a time, you know, you and everybody on the boat or everybody weight fishing, everybody starts hooking up and then it stops, keep casting. In 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes might go by. And then, boom, another wave will come through. And you'll start boom, 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 boom. You'll start picking up, picking up the pace again. And then, you know, they're, they're, the fish are just rolling through and you're just, you're just hooking up. Cast as fast as you can, herp, and get in and out there. Now, you don't want to gut hook flounder. Nobody likes it. We all hate it. If it happens... Feel bad for the flounder. Don't want to hurt the flounder, especially if we're not keeping flounder or if they're undersized. And also, nobody wants to retie. We don't want to have to cut it off and retie, and it takes time. And it's just a bad scenario. Gut hooking is just awful. Here's something that I've really learned during this closure is how to set the hook. Everybody says you have to make the big fish eat, right? You have to make the big flounders eat and, and let them take it and and kind of turn the lure around and all this I, I don't wait for all that i'm not doing the 10 second or 15 second or even five second wait no pausing i'm jigging 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 as soon as that flounder comes up and hits it and takes it right back down you feel it i'm not talking about the little tap 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 jerk jerk tap 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 that's most likely that's not a flounder some people think oh man they're 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 flounders are they're all around me. They're they're tearing this up, but they're not they're not taking the hook. They're not, you know, they're just grabbing onto it or not. No, that's not a flounder. Sorry. Uh, most likely it's going to be pinfish. Sometimes it might be a small flounder. It might be a, a little chip, but most likely it's going to be pinfish. It's going to be a whiting. It can be croaker. It can be you know. There's a lot of other fish out there. It can be a hardhead. It can be a, a, any number of fish, but not a flounder. A lot of times it could be sand trout. Sand trout would do that quite a bit. They will grab and jerk and almost jerk the rod out of your hand because they'll hit it so hard, but they won't take the hook. They won't take the lure. So I, those I ignore. Those I ignore. I keep trying to fish and stay away from that. Don't set the hook on that.
But when you do feel that flounder, you feel that big thump, or you sometimes you just run into a wall, kind of feels like you're hung up for a second. I will simply just lift, lift my rod tip up, drag the you're dragging the you're lifting your rod tip up, you're dragging the flounder on bottom. All right, he's there. It's heavy. He's there. Reel back down. Lower your rod tip as you reel back down, and then jerk up. Boom. They have extremely hard jaws, a lot of bony mouths, so you want to penetrate that. You want to get that. You don't want them to eat your lure waiting three or four, waiting five to 15 seconds, and they'll eat your, your lure and your jig head and it goes all the way in the stomach. That's a gut hook. You don't want it around the gills. You want it in the mouth. As soon as they grab it, drag it for a second, lower your rod tip down a little bit, and then set the hook extremely hard to penetrate that mouth so you make sure you get a proper hook set and it's in the mouth and they're easier to take off take it right off and you know and throw it right back in the water especially now during the closer after this video when you throw it in your box if they're big enough one more thing this video has went on way longer than i wanted to i apologize but one more thing that i want to say is how do you fish a structure right so you have those bulkheads um and you have rocks and you have the drop-offs well you cast at them and what I've been doing a lot is once I hit that area, whether it's a bulkhead or a rock or a, a dock post, and I want to fish for a flounder, I don't automatically just start swimming and jerking and getting away from there. I will toss it, and I'll let it land near that structure, and I'll just jiggle it a little bit. I'll wait a few seconds, and then I'll jiggle a little bit. And I'll wait a few seconds, and I'll jiggle a little bit. Because if there's a flounder right there, I don't want to drop it right next to him and then move it behind him. I'll drop it right next to him and then I'll move it a little bit. Then I'll move it a little bit. Move it a little bit. Then I'll start swimming it away. Hopefully, all that little wiggling, he'll grab onto it. But a lot of times, they're, they're, they're not necessarily mean that they're right against that, that structure. Sometimes they can be, you know, three, four feet, sometimes five feet out. But that's just me. Anyway, that's what I do. That's how that's how I've been living this flounder life, right? It's a, it's a tough life, you know, but someone has to live it. You know, I've been out there for the last two, three months, you know, grinding hard. Um, on the water two, three times a week, and I've just gained a ton, a ton of knowledge. And that's that's really the key is time on the water. You know, you could take this information that I'm giving you and other YouTubers give you or other fishermen, and anglers, people on Facebook, on social media. Take that information, take that knowledge, and you go out and you fish. You get time on the water, and then you turn it to your own. You know, you change it up. You know, and, and flounder are changing. The bite is changing all the time. Whether you're fishing for flounder, reds, or trout, or whatever, the bite changes all the time. What they want to see, it, it can change from hour to hour. That's why... We take a lot of different colors with us. That's why I take a lot of different techniques with me. I take a lot of different rigs. I'll have one rod tied on with the getter done. I'll have another rod tied on with tandem. And I might have another rod with the single jig head. But yeah, I mean, that's it. You know, just time on the water. Just get out there. And one thing that I can't stress enough to everybody is that when you are out there, and I know the fishery is going to finally open up, and a lot of people are extremely, extremely thirsty to catch some flounder and keep some uh is just be you know be kind to others you know it's gonna be a madhouse i'm just imagining how crazy it's gonna be because i know i've been on boats before where we've got into some altercations with other boats because they'll come within inches of hitting your boat because they want to squeeze you and push you out of a spot or you have other weight fishermen who are just disrespectful and just gonna want to rock walk right in front of you and you know when when and, and walk through your line or where you're casting but just even you know on the land on the rocks on the piers you know just be be patient with each other you know we're all in the same boat you know we're all that that fishing community is a is a for the most part is a tight neck community uh you do have people that just don't have that that courtesy and just don't have those those ethics so just be patient with them and be patient with each other and hopefully everybody's gonna catch their limit you know, this year, this time last year, well, let me take it back. In October of last year, we were really, really getting into them. You know, we're in the South Jetty. We were just hammering them, getting after them. And October this year wasn't that way. We weren't catching a lot of fish. Right now, we're catching some good numbers. Some really good numbers are still coming on the water. Uh, this time last year, we weren't catching the good numbers. It was really just turning off. Matter of fact, this week last year, 
I think I stuck a fork in, in flounder fishing. Uh, doesn't mean that they're not there. Not all the flounder leave. Not all the flounder go offshore. Uh, so I've been told from Texas Park and Wildlife, but quite a few do. So just be patient. You know, you don't need to keep five every single time you go out. Just keep what you need. Let's uh, let's hope this fishery bounces back, and hopefully this closure, will, this whole closure thing, will be in our past in our rearview mirror and then we'll be able to keep all year long but hey but thanks for watching you know that's my little soapbox i guess you know i just want everybody to go out and have a good time and celebrate each other and hopefully everybody will hook up and thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed you know subscribe to the channel really helps out if you leave a comment give a thumbs up to next time hopefully you catch me hooking up and i hope this helps you hook up as well thanks